So today, let's get into a little bit of something that happened at my class this weekend. I'm a little hoarse. I had two days of yelling over jets. Uh, I was just at the Homestead range down here in Miami, Florida. And uh, there is an Air Force base that is literally right next to the range where, I don't know, you're probably maybe 100, 200 yards from these jets taking off. And uh, it's a little loud to coach over that. So I had to do some extra yelling this weekend. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about targets. And one of the most interesting things that happened at this class, which I don't really remember seeing this happen very often, but there was this one target that I leave wide open on purpose to, I guess it actually finally successfully happened, or it became such an issue that I actually had to write on the target. Uh, the target would suck the person into it, and it would make them shoot it in a spot that I didn't want them to shoot it in. I'm, I did it on purpose to force them to understand that you have to stage plan around specific targets or arrays or whatever it is that suck you in. And obviously this sport is very visual. So what happens with a lot of people is they allow their vision to kind of uh, suck them into a target. So if they see a bunch of a targets and let's just say there's an array of, well, I'll just give you an example of this one. There was two targets wide open right in front of them. You had to go to the left corner to shoot a barrel on the right hand side that you could only see in that corner. Then there was another barrel on the left hand side that you could only shoot that target behind that barrel from the right front corner. So you had to go to both corners and then there was two targets in the middle. What would make or break this position, which would really add or take away one to two seconds, sometimes more depending on what kind of shooter you were, was that if you got to the corner and you had already shot the two paper, you were now doing nothing for eight feet of running. You, it was gonna be two to three yards of, of, of you trying to get over to the far corner and then shoot the left one. Versus if you go to the left corner, you shoot the one behind the barrel, you could shoot on two paper, you could shoot one coming in and then leave. There was lots of options in this array but one allowed you to shoot the entire time that you were shooting the stage, and one would make you shoot a bunch of stuff and then run. So you were basically going spot to spot, or you were going shot to shot, which is what I teach. Well, this target just kept sucking them in, sucking them in, sucking them in, and they just constantly kept getting jammed up in that target. So they would go and shoot six shots in one spot instead of only shoot two. <clears throat> So as we were going through this, through the class, I started to pay attention a little bit more to what they were watching and looking at while they were walking the stage, which I always do, but because this specific group or class, every single shooter was doing it. So I, <laughs> I started paying more attention to what they were looking at when they were walking stages. And I was noticing that the targets no matter what array you were on, were sucking them in. So the first position of this stage required a crash when you exited. So when you exited that position, you needed to be able to see where you were going and find a specific spot on the ground so you could start shooting. And if you didn't do that, you were significantly out of time. So you were either way too far in to where now you're gonna stop and shoot, or you were too far away and you were, gonna, you were gonna end up having to shoot, put your gun down, run a little bit, get yourself to the corner, then finish. So either way, you ended up putting yourself into a stop position, into a corner that you could have shot your way through. You didn't have to stop there. The more I realized, or the more I saw this, is the more I realized how important it is to kind of really understand that the targets are definitely 100%, 1 million percent, the problem in our sport. Most people don't ever get outside of the gun, the gun, the gun in our sport. And that's what's really beating up most people's shooting. 
most people, like this class, you're, my average shooter in this class, I don't think I had, I think I maybe had one A class shooter. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe a, a B. It's, I mean, I, 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 I don't really pay attention to classification because it doesn't matter. I don't care what your letter is. I'm gonna teach you to be a GM. Even if you're a B class, you're just gonna suck at what I teach because you haven't got to that level yet. But I, I want you to have the knowledge on how to become a GM. And if you don't, you just keep shooting the same way you already are and you don't get better. So I'm watching, as we're going through these stages and we're, we're working this stage over and over and over again, and we're breaking sections down on this stage, I'm realizing how quickly the vision falls off, the shooting falls off. And what's going on is the targets are the only thing that's important for most shooters because they only care about their gun. They're obsessed with the gun. Don't get me wrong, that, that, that's how we start the game. You have to have it. I love shooting my gun. I don't like just running stages with no gun. That's, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is their focus is only on the gun. They never once go outside of the gun practice and think, wow, my entries really suck. Wow, I miss a lot when I enter a target or, oh man, I can't move and shoot or all these different things. None of those things that I just mentioned have anything to do with the gun. The gun is held exactly the same no matter how much you move, how much you don't move. Whether you're standing or, or, or moving and shooting, you hold the gun exactly the same. Well, you're supposed to. You pull the trigger exactly the same. You respond to the dot exactly the same. The difference is the gun's moving around and that's from movement. The gun doesn't move around when you're standing still other than the recoil, but guess what? That recoil carries over when you're moving and shooting. It doesn't matter what you're doing with the gun. It's always the constant. What changes is what your body does with the gun. So if you're moving, the gun's moving. If you're bouncing, the gun's bouncing. I understand now more than ever that the body affects 99% of your accuracy in this sport more than your hands. <laughs> I mean, I, I cannot tell you the levels of shooters I had that were not superstars in this class that I could get and to shoot a 20 split all day long at 10 yards, bang, bang, two alpha, bang, bang, two alpha, bang, bang, two alpha, all day long. And as soon as I made them move, they couldn't hit the side of the barn because they didn't understand the footwork. They didn't understand how the timing worked or the movement or the this or that. And this, there's no specific trick. There's techniques, but there's no like, oh, if you do this, you're, you're never gonna miss. It's, it's not how it works. It's understanding how the gun responds or reacts and you responding to it. And understanding how you can, there's techniques that I teach that can get you to time things without using your brain. It just happens because of the way you set it up. And the reason that is, is because it's faster to exit that way. You're being more aggressive, you're attacking, but you're also calmer. You're not just sending rounds to send rounds. It's against the law to send makeup shots. You know, you don't wanna to have to have makeup shots, so you follow two rules. There are so many things that go into this sport, but everybody's so wrapped up in the gun, you never can get better. The next time you go out and practice, or the next time you watch a good shooter shoot, watch what they do and stop looking at the gun. Stop paying attention to the gun. Stop looking at their scores. Look at their footwork. Look at how their body moves. Do they swing a lot? Do they go up and down a whole lot? Start watching those things and take your mind off the gun for a little while. And I think you'll see a big difference in actually what is going on with those shooters. I think you'd be surprised how many top level shooters in this sport, including some of the top level coaches, don't realize how much that they figured out the body movement or the movement or understand how to control their body, but they don't think it's a big deal because they think that it's the gun that they're doing all, that's doing all the work because that's just what they've trained forever. But almost every top shooter that I watch that shoots in this sport has excellent movement, has excellent entries, excellent exit, but they control their movement, they control their bodies. They don't allow their bodies to go up and down. 
left and right, all these different things. That's not by accident. That's not by accident. They might not teach it. They might not understand how to explain it or even use it, but that's not by accident. That all happens because you start to figure out that the gun's moving around. How do you control the gun? You control it with your body. All right, guys, if you have any questions, hit me up in those comments, and I'll see you on the range.